in our family we kept chickens and to get the food for the chickens we had to give up egg coupons and to get enough food for the chickens we had to collect other people's egg coupons which meant we had to sell the eggs to other people to get their coupons so that we could get the food for the chickens. Now chickens don't lay 12 months a year so we had to store eggs against those periods of time when the chickens weren't laying eggs so that we could have eggs to sell to people to get their coupons. So it became a very technical kind of business. You know? And one time in my old elementary school, somebody had killed a horse. And there was my sister with a knife and a big pot, and with <laughs> all the other people cutting up pieces. And my mother made hamburgers from it. Honestly, that was a scene. Nobody knew <laughs> if that horse was sick or anything. But if you cook a hamburger very well, then maybe all the germs are dead. A lot of Hollywood films of London in the Blitz, they, they get it all wrong in my opinion. It was the adults that used to worry. Kids yeah. didn't. For me personally, the biggest challenge of an air raid was to be first out there to pick up the shrapnel. Yeah. If you could pick up a piece of shrapnel and swear on oath that it was hot when you picked it up, <laughs> mm -hmm. it was worth a bundle. Another thing, you know, a lot of our shrapnel was from the anti-aircraft shells. The anti-aircraft shells had like a brass nose piece. That would never break up and they were screwed in. Mm. And sometimes you would find one still with a bit of the casing attached to the screw threads. If you found a piece like that, boy, that was really worth a bundle. Mm. And then of course, if you found something that was obviously a piece of bomb, that was worth more, you yeah. In this beautiful village at Glietzen, 60 kilometers east of Berlin. We moved there in 43 and stayed there till 45. This was a wonderful time. We had a stone house with one room and a very tiny kitchen corner. And then there was also a little room. At the end was like a closet room where Renate and I slept, but there was no heat there. And many times when we had to wash in the morning, there was ice mm -hmm. swimming on the water. We had to get up very early because at 6.50 the train was coming to mm. bring us to school and we had to run at least five minutes to get to the station. And if we missed it, we had to walk five kilometers. It was a wonderful landscape with forests, lakes for ice skating in the winter, and hills for sledding. Oh, mm -hmm. it was wonderful. You know, because we were in Altlitzen, we didn't have to starve in hunger. The hunger came in Berlin later. We had two chickens, my mother called them Gert and Daisy, and they became pets, you know, and they stopped laying. We kept them. We had a rabbit. Did you? And we used to keep him as a pet and feed him every day. And then one day we came home, he wasn't there. We had him for dinner that night. And another time I can remember during the war, she had the ration of meat on the table. They had a great big Pyrenees mountain dog next door, and mm -hmm. somehow we got out. And he stole the meat. My mother was chasing him. She was chasing him everywhere. She was so mad. We didn't get any meat that week. At one time, when everything was a little bit more civilized, you know, our father Renate and I, we, we tried fixing the roof, putting those tiles back. They don't have tiles like we have. They have them out of what bricks are made. There was an mm -hmm. attic. You were standing inside the attic and reached out. Mm -hmm. And if you put them nicely, you know, start on the bottom and go up. <laughs> my mother always said, never throw bread away or regret it. You always want for that piece of bread. So I can't throw bread away unless I give it to the animals. Mm -hmm. But it must have been terribly hard for our parents to feed us. She probably fed me her rations too. Well, I'm sure they gave up a lot for yeah. us. Was school open most of the time during the war? See, when we were in Atlitz, we went to Bad Freienwalde, which was five kilometers away, and we went there by Bimmelbahn. It's a small little train which went through the woods and everything. And then when we came to Berlin, I think my dad taught us till mm -hmm. the war was over. 
and then schools opened up again. And for toilet paper, we had pieces of newspaper tied yeah, on the pieces of string. Cut it up and put it on a string. But so the newsprint in England doesn't come off the paper, so it's not like over here. <laughs> now, let me notice if you read the newspaper over here, you end up with black all over your oh, fingers. Yeah. English papers have never been like that. No. So you didn't get black bottoms. Oh. We never got to look. <laughs> and then there was no running water, no electricity. But with the electricity, that wasn't too bad because we had Moscow time, two hours ahead. So it was still light at midnight in the summer. Did a lot of people have pets? I mean, oh, yeah. we yeah. always had dogs. Yeah. You could get horse meat. It wasn't supposed to be fit for human consumption. It would be dyed green, and that was for your animals. Then we had whale meat. Do you remember whale meat? Nobody no. would eat that. <laughs> with water, we had to go two blocks away and schlep. 10 gallon Ima all the way up to where we lived. And, and the miracle when, when finally the water came back, we all danced around the forts.